and other shit. Our merciful and loving Father in heaven, it is again, our Father, that you have allowed your servants to gather before your holy presence to call upon the most holy name. And Father, we come as humble as we know how, Thanking you for the life that you've given us until this present moment. And our Father, we are here because we want to be in that holy city one day. Where there is no more sadness, no more sorrow, no more sickness. We pray, our Father, that you would continue to give us that faith and understanding that we need, that we may be able to walk righteously before your holy presence, so that we may be able to attain that eternal life that you promised unto your children. We pray, our Father, for all of our loved ones, all of our sisters and brothers, wherever they may be this morning, that you would continue to throw your love and arms around all of your children and guide us in that righteous path so that we may be able to see you in that holy city someday. Father, we praise and we glorify the most holy name. And we pray, Father, that you would never let your children fall into temptation, that you will never let your children fall away from you, that we may be able to walk righteously before your holy brothers and maintain our faith, serving you until the end of our lives. Our Lord Jesus Christ, we are so thankful that you was obedient to the Father. You died that we might have a right to everlasting life. And we know that you are our mediator. You are the one that mediates between us and the Father. And we are asking you, Lord, to please continue to take our prayers to the Father. Asking the Father to hear our prayers, forgive our sins, so that we can continue to serve you and our Father until the end of our lives. Our Father in heaven, we return to you in prayer. Thanking you, Father, for continuously watching over your children. Continuously remind us of all of the things that we should do so that we may be able to attain that salvation that you promised. And we pray that you would be with us this morning as our brother lead us in the study of your words that you would open up our hearts and our minds that we may be able to understand your truth so that we may be able to continue to walk righteously before your holy presence. Don't ever leave us alone. We don't know where we would go without you, Father. Continue to guide our brethren that are trying their best to lead us in a righteous way of serving you. Continue to guide them with your Holy Spirit that they may be able to continue to fulfill their obligations before the most holy side. We truly believe that you will be with us throughout our worship service, that you will not let any of us fall asleep during our worship service, that we may be able to hear your holy words 
that would keep us on the righteous path, serving the most holy name. We truly believe that you blessed us this morning and that you would be with us throughout our worship service, that you've forgiven us for any sins that we've committed, because we ask all of these things in the name of thy son, Jesus. Amen. and sisters once again we are very thankful to our lord god and our lord jesus christ for constantly giving us the life and strength that we need in order for us not only to exist in this world but also to be able to manifest god's love in our lives to follow the commandments and instructions of our lord god in order for us to be of better service to him Brothers and sisters, let us continue to open our minds and our hearts as we listen to the words of our Lord God from a lesson that was prepared by Brother Rania G. Manalo 25 years ago, which is as very much important during that time as it is today. We are here because our Lord God deemed us to be able to continue following his teachings. One of the teachings that we have received is the love of the brotherhood. The love of brotherhood is something that is admired by many, even though there are a lot of people or institutions that they claim they also have that same love of brotherhood or within their groups or peers. But we certainly believe that the love of brotherhood inside the Church of Christ is the one sanctioned by our Lord God and blessed with the Holy Spirit in order, in order for us to truly manifest love for one another that is pleasing in the sight of our Lord God. Now, because of the Church of Christ, which became an institution under a corrupted church administration, wherein a lot of people were displaced, a lot of people were persecuted and oppressed. Many were unjustly expelled. And other people are thinking, is the love of brotherhood still applicable, especially in our situation today? Especially for those who have been freed from the bondage of a corrupt church administration. Does the love of brotherhood still apply to each and every one of us? Let us start our lesson as we read what's written here in Galatians chapter 5, 13 up to 15, this is what is recorded. As for you, my friends, you were called to be free, but do not let this freedom become an excuse for letting your physical desires control you. For instead, let love make you serve one another. For the whole law is summed up in one commandment. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. But if you act like wild animals, hurting and harming each other, then watch out, or you will completely destroy one another. Beloved brothers and sisters, ever since we have been freed from the bondage of a corrupt church administration, 
we are still bonded together by the doctrines and teachings of our Lord God. We are confident that we are still being guided by the Holy Spirit by following the teachings and commandments, which is to serve our Lord God with all our heart, mind, and soul. But not only that, also the second most important commandment, which is to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Now, how about in our situation today, wherein we have been freed according to the Bible? Do not let this freedom become an excuse for letting your physical desires control you. There are other people once they felt that as if they have been freed, they made it an excuse to do whatever they wanted. The Bible reminds us, instead of that, let love make you serve one another. During the time when we were still active members as church officers or ministers and church workers, whenever there is problems within the brethren, whenever there are some arguments between two brothers or sisters, they have been called by either the church elders the officers, or even the ministers. And then they would be facing each other and airing out their grievances in order for them to be uh, mended back together as brothers and sisters. Before, the reason why would they would go through that process is because if they don't, there is a risk that they may be expelled. So there is also a fear factor. There is also people who are forced to love because they have to or they have been ordered to. But now, is it still the same case? This is all the more reason for us to prove to our Lord God that the things that we have learned, the doctrines that we have received, are all being put into practice. Not only the things that we know, but we know that are important to our Lord God. This is the time for us to truly manifest that we have learned from the doctrines. And that is, according to the verse, let let love make you serve one another. Why are we going to help one another? Because of love. Not because Kaganito told us. Not because if we don't, then we have to make a salaisai. Not because if we don't, then we will be cast away. No, but because of love. Let it not be the reason for us to act like wild animals, according to the verse, hurting and harming each other. So how do we know if we have come to the true understanding of loving our neighbor as we love ourselves? Because we constantly hear this. Even during the time we have been receiving the Bible studies, even during the time we were attending uh, worship services, we keep on hearing love your neighbor as you love yourself. But have we truly understand this commandment? How do we know? Let's read what's written here in chapter 6 in the verse is 10. Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do to everyone, we should do good to everyone, especially to those in the family of faith. This is the time for us to prove that we truly understand love of the brotherhood. Love our neighbor, according to Apostle Paul, whenever we have the opportunity. When will we have an opportunity? When there is a need for help, a need to help others who are either oppressed, being persecuted, or basically just in need. That is the perfect opportunity. And the Bible says, whenever we have that opportunity, we should do good. To a select few? No. To everyone. That's why there's no discrimination when it comes to doing good. It is for everyone. And there is only an emphasis that especially to those in the same family of faith. Especially those who share our faith in our Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. But even if they don't. Even if we have a difference in opinion or principles or doctrines or beliefs, it doesn't mean that once they are in need of help, we won't help them. Because it is the proof that we are true Christians or followers of our Lord Jesus Christ. If we help 
and love one another at every opportune time. This is actually what it means to put love into practice. When we have that love, and there is a need for us to express and put it into action, that is when we need to help others. Now, what is God's expectations to those that he has set aside for his own in terms of loving one another and love for the brotherhood? Let's read what's written here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and the verses 9 up to 11. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another, just as you also are doing. What is the expectations of our Lord God? Especially to those whom he has set aside for his own, according to the verse, Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another, just as you also are doing. Let us remember, in the previous verse, we have been reminded that for every opportunity, whenever we have it, we should do good to everyone. Now, if everyone were to follow that commandment, do you think there would be hatred in this world? Do you think there would be protest against bigotry? racial discrimination, hate crimes. No. Why? Because everyone would be loving one another. And for us to manifest that love towards one another and everyone, we should comfort and edify one another. But how do we comfort and edify one another? Let's read what's written in Isaiah chapter 50 and the verse is 4. This is what's written. The sovereign Lord has taught me what to say so that I can strengthen the weary. Every morning he make, makes me eager to hear what is going, he is going to teach me. How do we manifest our love so that we may be able to comfort and edify one another? By being instruments of our Lord God. In order for us to be able to say what will strengthen our brethren? What will strengthen those who are weary and tired? Those who are conflicted? Those who are problematic? Those who are going through trials and tribulations? And let our Lord God be the one to teach us what to say. Let the Holy Spirit course through us as we talk to our brother or sister, especially those who are in need. Those who are going through severe persecution, especially our brothers and sisters who are still in the Philippines, subject to persecution and oppression. Many of them are still in hiding. There are those who are still in prison. But for those, especially who are living in first world countries, probably are not as affected as those in other parts of the world. This is the perfect time for us to be able to be instruments of our Lord God, so that we may strengthen those who are tired, those who are weary, those who are being conflicted with so many trials and tribulations. Let us continue to be mindful, brothers and sisters, whenever we talk to our brethren. Let's be more sensitive to their needs. Because if we are emphatic, if we are genuinely concerned, with our brother and sister, that alone being felt by the person we are talking to is enough to strengthen our brother or sister, especially those who are weary. How else can we be strengthened and edified? Let's read what's written in Colossians chapter 3 and the verses 16. Let the message about Christ in all its richness fill our lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. How else can we be edified and strengthened in our faith? By the message about our Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord God, with all its richness. And let it be the one to fill our lives. There are so many information out there, especially with the use of technology today. With the internet, there are so many information 
But what kind of information are we filling our lives with? It should be the words of our Lord God. That's why even with the use of technology today, we are able to hear the words, the message of our Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ by means of our worship services. We are able to sing psalms and hymns, spiritual songs to give praises to our Lord God. And all with a thankful heart, allowing us, even in our situation today, we are able to worship Him. Let us not take this for granted. Beloved brothers and sisters, we have been prepared by our Lord God to continue worshiping Him, come what may in this world. That's why we are very fortunate. Because we are still able to have our daily prayers, have our Bible studies, and even our worship services, even during the time when there are so many limitations for other people. But God paved the way for us to continue with our services. So how about now? How about in our current circumstances? What is the reminder for all of us? All of those who have been called by our Lord God. Let's read what's written in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and the verses 14 up to 18. Brothers and sisters, we urge you to warn those who are lazy. Encourage those who are timid. Take tender care of those who are weak. Be patient with everyone. See that no one pays back evil for evil, but always try to do good to each other and to all people. Always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Jesus Christ. Did we understand the last part of that, that verse? Verse. For us to be thankful in all circumstances. Meaning, come what may in this world, whatever the situation may be, we should always be thankful. Who is expected to be thankful amidst all kinds of circumstances? Those whom God has chosen to belong to our Lord Jesus Christ. So if we truly believe in our hearts, in our faith, that we belong to Christ's body, his flock, his church, then this is God's will for us. What is that? That brothers and sisters, all of us, not to be lazy. To be able to encourage those who are timid. And those who are weak in the faith, especially, let us take tender care of them. And let us be patient. Sometimes that is what is lacking in each and every one of us. We want things now. I remember when I was uh, doing a Bible study back in the provinces, um, I was teaching a lesson about being prayerful. And then one of the Bible students asked me, uh, he felt that his prayer were not, was not being answered. And I asked him, what is your prayer? And he, he said, I asked for patience because probably he knows that he's very impatient. So I was wondering why would he feel that his prayer wasn't being answered? So I asked him, how did you pray when you prayed for patience? He said, well, I asked God, God, please give me patience now. So I think... That's not the whole concept of asking for patience. If you're ordering our Lord God to give you patience right now, then that is futility in itself. Let us be patient with one another. If we expect people to do things the way we expect it, and we're not being patient with, that, with them, that's why there's a saying, Habaan mo pa yung PC mo eh. uh, What's that in English? Lengthen your, I don't know what, is that a rope or a thread? Your thread of patience. There you go. Because other people would have um, different ways of coping with so many things. And in order for us to understand them, we should be able to be patient with everyone. Each and every one of us is different. But according to the verse that we have read, we are being reminded to be patient with everyone. 
We are being reminded to do good to each other and to all people, regardless of race, regardless of who they are, where they are, what their educational background is, what their principles are. Let us do good to everyone. Let us be jo joyful and never stop praying. That's why even though there are those who already stopped praying, even with our daily committee prayers, in our daily prayers that we conduct even in through Zoom, a lot of our brethren who would wake up early in the morning so that they can attend the Tagalog daily prayer, or they would set time so that they will be able to attend the English daily prayer every day. Why? Be are we re uh, are we required to do this? If not, then we will have to write a salisai or be suspended from our duties? No, because we know this is what our Lord God is waiting from us, waiting for us to pray to him, to give thanks to him so that we may be able to give glory to his name. That's why, beloved brothers and sisters, this is the time for us to have that genuine concern and love for one another. Ito yung malasakit sa kapwa, malasakit sa kapatid. This is something that a lot of us admired inside the Church of Christ. A lot of people admired this kind of brotherhood that we have inside the Church. Because this is the one that is based from the Holy Scriptures. How important is it for us to have that genuine concern or love for the welfare welfare of others let's read what's written here in james chapter 5 and the verse is 19 up to 20. my friends if any of you wander away from the truth and another one brings you back again remember this whoever turns a sinner back from the the wrong way will save that sinner's soul from death and bring about the forgiveness of many sins this is that point when we have that genuine concern towards other people, especially if we know that others are falling away from the faith, if they are growing cold in their faith or growing weak in their resolve, especially in these last days, if we allow ourselves to be instruments of our Lord God so that they may be strengthened, they may be turned back to the right path, then, according to the verse, whoever turns a sinner back from the wrong way will save that sinner's soul from death and bring about the forgiveness of many sins. All of us are sinners. Technically, all of us are sinners every day. But if we do our part to repent, to ask God for forgiveness and help others also to repent, then we are allowing our Lord God to cleanse us of the many sins that we have committed. Now other people might be thinking in their heads, especially when a lesson like this is being taught during worship services. I remember a lot of uh, people would ask me after, brother, I think you were trying to, um, how do you say that in English? In Tagalog, it's parang pinapatamaan mo naman ako kapatid eh. I think that lesson is was meant for me. Actually, the lesson is all meant for all of us. Imagine this lesson was drafted by Brother Orion G. Manalo 25 years ago. And this same lesson is applicable even during our time today. Let us all remember, if we are thinking that, you know, this lesson might be hitting a nerve on me, I will always have a justification Anybody can say, you know, brother, it's easy for us to say that, you know, we love one another. Let's forgive those who are who erred against us. But once you're you're there, you're actually there and you're the one who's hurt. You're the one who who received all of these things that they have done to you. Then probably it's not that easy to love others. Probably that's the time it's not easy to forgive, forgive those who have sinned against you. So what does the, the Bible say about that? Let's ask Apostle Paul here in Ephesians chapter 4 and the verses 31 up to 32. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, 
as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. This is the perfect formula for each and every one of us. If you want to live a long life, get rid of bitterness. That bitterness in our hearts that we feel, that, that bitter pit in the bottom of our hearts that we know this person has done me wrong. I can never forgive this person. That would also be connected to rage, to anger. That would result in harsh words, slandering other people and every kind of evil behavior. That's why there are hate crimes. That's why there are hatred and bigotry amongst other people. Why? Because they don't want to get rid of this bitterness and rage. Now, instead of having all of that negativity in our lives, the Bible says, instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another. Now, why? Why do we have to be tender-hearted and kind and forgiving? Because we're being reminded, especially for us who may have forgotten, God was the first one who forgave us. How? Through our Lord Jesus Christ. When he died on the cross for the sins he did not commit, he died for us so that we may be forgiven. Now, still, other people would be quick to say, Brother, you don't understand what he did to me. Brother, you, did not un- you do not understand what they have done to us. If only you know what they did to us, then you would know why I feel this way against that brother or I, I feel this way against them because they're evil and I can never, ever forgive them. How did our Lord Jesus Christ thoroughly explain the value of forgiving those who have transgressed against us. Let's read this verse in Matthew chapter 18, 21 up to 22. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, if my brother keeps on sinning against me, how many times do I have to forgive him? Seven times? No, not seven times, answered Jesus, but 70 times seven. You know, if you... If you read again what Peter asked our Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, if my brother keeps on sinning, not just once. He did not just sin against me once. No, he keeps on sinning against me. How many times do I have to forgive him? As if to ask, no, I can't forgive him. That's the reason why I'm asking, have I reached that limit? If that limit is reached already, then I have every justification why I can't forgive that brother or sister, or anyone who have sinned against me. What's the answer of our Lord Jesus Christ? No, it's not seven times. It's 70 times seven. Especially for those who are good in math. That's how many times you have to forgive your brother or your sister. Now, others might be thinking, okay, so I'll just have to reach that number, and then I can stop forgiving him. Let's continue reading this verse, 23 up to 35. Because the kingdom of heaven is like this. This is according to our Lord Jesus Christ. When Once there was a king who decided to check on his servants' accounts. He had just begun to do when one of them was brought in who owed him millions of dollars. Hmm. Do you remember or you think of anyone who owes millions of dollars? Well, this is one of them. The servant did not have enough to pay his debt. So the king ordered him to be sold as a slave with his wife and his children and all that he had in order to pay the debt. The servant fell on his knees before the king. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay you everything. The king felt sorry for him. So he forgave him and the and debt. Forgive him the debt and let him go. Now, this is a person who has millions of debt. And then, instead of being punished, he begged for his life. He begged that he will pay everything so that he will save himself and his family. The king, according to our Lord Jesus Christ, felt sorry 
and forgave him. Let's continue reading in the following verse. Then the man went out and met one of his fellow servants who owed him a few dollars. He grabbed him and started choking him. Pay back what you owe me, he said. His fellow servant fell down and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had him thrown into jail until he should pay his debt. When the other servants saw what ha had happened, they were very upset and went to the king and told him everything. Next verse. So he called the servant in. You worthless slave, he said. I forgave you the whole amount you owed me just because you asked me to. You should have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had mercy on you. The king was very angry and he sent the servant to jail to be punished until he should pay back the whole amount. Can we see what happened here, beloved brothers and sisters? This is how our Lord Jesus Christ explained and described how important it is for us to be able to forgive those who have transgressed against us. There is a king. There is a servant. The servant owed millions of dollars to the king. Instead of being punished, he asked for forgiveness. He was forgiven. And then the time came when he saw his fellow servant who owed him a few dollars. As if he also transgressed against him. And he also begged for his life. But instead of forgiving that person, what did he do? He did not forgive him. He sent him to jail. And when the Lord or the king learned about what happened, he was very furious. He called him a worthless slave and reminded him that he was forgiven the whole amount that was owed because he asked for it. That should have been the same mercy he showed the other fellow servant when he had the chance. But he didn't. He refused to show the same mercy that was given to him. That's why our Lord Jesus Christ said that is a worthless slave. What is the conclusion in all of this? Next verse, Matthew 18, 23 up to 35. And Jesus concluded, that is how my Father in heaven will treat every one of you. Unless you forgive your brother from your heart. Brothers and sisters, let us look deep in our hearts. And find someone who has transgressed against us. Someone we feel so much anger and bitterness against. And if that person or persons is somebody who we can say to ourselves, I will never forgive this person. Even to my grave, I cannot forgive that person. This is a reminder for us from our Lord Jesus Christ, reminding us that this is how our Lord God in heaven will treat each and every one of us. We will also be punished by our Lord God unless, unless we are able to forgive those who have transgressed against us. Again, brothers and sisters, each and every one of us have our own story to tell. Why we have so much pain, how we have been hurt so much, and how we cannot forgive those people who have done that to us. But then, if we cannot forgive those who have sinned against us, how can we justify that to our Lord God who forgave us who forgave us, who allowed his only begotten son to be nailed on the cross for our forgiveness. So what does it all mean, brothers and sisters? Let's read the last verse here in Matthew 16, 14 up to 15. If you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your father will not forgive your sins. Brothers and sisters, let us let go of all the bitterness, anger, and hatred in our hearts. Let us prove to our Lord God that what we have received 
about the doctrines on love of the brotherhood, loving others, our neighbors, the way we love ourselves. Let us now show it to our Lord God. Yes, it is true. We have been hurt. Yes, it is true. There are so many things that have been done to us that may not be forgivable. But let us also remember, if we do not forgive them, then we will not be forgiven. But if we do forgive them, then our Heavenly Father will forgive each and every one of us. Come what may in this world, brothers and sisters, whatever our situation may be, whoever we are in this world, wherever we may be, our Lord God is constantly looking at each and every one of us. When He looks down at our hearts, may He find the love for others. And loving them means helping them at every opportunity that we can. If we can just love other people the way we love ourselves, there will be no hatred. And let us hope that when God looks in our hearts, He will no longer find hatred. He will no longer find that bitterness and anger. Instead, he will find that we are following him, being obedient to his will, so that we may love others the way we love ourselves. Brothers and sisters, this is the time for us to be used as instruments so that we may help those who are in need. We may forgive those who have sinned against us, and we may be able to strengthen and edify our brothers and sisters and anyone who would be tired and weary, persecuted and oppressed, going through trials and tribulations so that all of us, once we reach our destination and when we face our Lord Jesus Christ, then he will know we have forgiven those who have done sin against us and we'd hold no grudges against anyone. And hopefully, we will receive that grace of salvation come Judgment Day. Let us all stand and we shall pray. Our loving Father in heaven, thank you so much, O God, because we know up to this very moment you are looking down on us, reminding us on how you want us to conduct our lives. Because we know, Father, that for as long as you are the one leading us, you expect us to follow your teachings and your commandments. You expect us, Father, to be true Christians before you so that we may give you that proof that you need, that come judgment day, we will receive the grace of salvation coming from you. Father, we pray for everyone. We pray for those who are persecuted, those who are oppressed, those who are in hiding, and those who are suffering. Father, please use us as your instrument so that we may be able to help them in whatever we, way we can. We will do as you will, Father. And we pray for those who are instruments of evil. Father, if it is not too late, allow them to have a change of heart. Change their spirit, Father. Allow them to embrace you with the light coming from you so that they may change for the better. And if it's not, it is according to your will, may be also forgiven of the sins that they have committed. Father, we pray for those who are ill, those who may be sick, Father. Please continue to heal us of our sicknesses. Send forth the Holy Spirit. Give us the health that we need, Father, so that we may use this body and strength that you have given us in order for us to continue worshiping your holy name. Our Lord Jesus Christ, thank you so much because you are always there to intercede all our prayers to the Father. We feel that all of our prayers are being heard because you unselfishly intercede all of them and we receive them so that we may use them in glorifying you and the Father in heaven. Our Lord God in heaven, we are confident that you will heal each and every one of us and you will give us everything that we need so that we may use it in glorifying your holy name. For all of these things we ask and beg in the name of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen.
the grace of salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen.